Hello, friends. How is everybody? Um, so, uh, yeah, welcome to Advent of Code 2020, uh, day 12. Um, and uh, <laughs> for reasons that perhaps we will understand one day, I am going to do something uh, inadvisable on today's stream. I'm going to try something a little bit silly <laughs> and a little bit entertaining. Um, I'm going to try and do uh, today's Advent of Code in Amstrad, uh, well, actually DR, Digital Research, Amstrad logo from 1985, uh, because it looks like a kind of logo-y kind of a problem in a, in a way. Uh, so let's have a look at... Uh, da, 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 da. I have too many screens in this room, and sometimes it can be interesting trying to work out which one you've got on where. There we go, that looks like a browser window to me. Let's go to adventofcode.com. Right. So, uh, having had a little look at the requirements here, um, it's something to do with that the ferry made decent progress towards the island. The storm came in faster than anyone expected. The ferry needs to take evasive action. The navigation computer is malfunctioning and producing extremely circuitous instructions. Uh, the captain uses the PA system to ask if anyone can help. You quickly volunteer. The navigation instructions, your puzzle input, consists of a sequence of single character actions paired with integer input values. After staring at them for a few minutes, you work out what they mean. Now, this is where it gets a little bit interesting, um, because we've got uh, north, south, east, and west. We've got left, we've got right, and we've got forward. So what we've got here is a set of uh, geometric operations that are mixing two different coordinate systems. Um, north, south, east, west, those are... Um, ordinal directions. My north is the same as your north, my west is the same as your west, and on a screen we are assuming that north is always towards the top, west is always towards, well in my case towards the left side of my screen, but I don't know which way my finger's pointing on the stream there, but it should be that way. East is that way, south is that way. Um, whereas left and right and forward, these are egocentric directions. So if I turn left, and then I turn left, and then I turn left, that's relative to me. And if I go forwards, it doesn't. It's not necessarily the same direction as your forwards. So now, normally, when you do kind of computer graphics transforms, you have these two separate. You either work in terms of a world coordinate system or in terms of a local coordinate system. Um, these are getting mixed up here. Now we've got a relatively simple set of examples here. Um, now the thing that makes this slightly entertaining is that actions like north. Uh, if you go forward a little bit and then you turn and then you go north, you're doing that. So you're still pointing in that direction. Um, <laughs> um, and so we got, uh, Chris hasn't done today's yet, but I know what I'm going to be doing, so watching it won't be spoilery, and I'm not doing it in logo. So um, so we've got forward, we've got north, we've got forward. Now, the, the only question that I have that might make this a little bit entertaining is uh, I'm assuming that the lefts and rights are always going to be multiples of 90. Uh, did I see a, so L, 90, 90, 90, 90, 90, 90, 90, 90, 90s, 90s, 180s, yeah, that's all fine. Uh, so I think, okay, now, here's how we're going to do it. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to solve this in, in two steps. I'm going to use a uh, tiny little bit of text manipulation to turn my input file into a program that I can then load into a Amstrad emulator and uh, run everything from there in logo on an emulated Amstrad from 1985. Uh, now, the Amstrad logo actually lives in a subfolder of one of my presentations. Dropbox text talks, the art of code, uh, CPC, there we go. That's where I keep all my little bits of retro stuff. Um, and the one I need is WinApe, and I am going to fire up Win Amstrad. So Ape is the Amstrad Plus emulator. Boom, there we go. Let me whack that up a little bit. And. Uh, da, 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 da. Uh, give me a second just to, to figure out. So there's all kinds of interesting. Uh, features and stuff that we can do here. One of the things that's going to make this interesting is that the Amstrad keyboard is not the same as an IBM keyboard, and there are keys on here I don't even have that I'm going to need to remember how to press to be able to do certain operations. Uh, but that's all right. We can live with that. Uh, that all looks pretty good. What I want to do is just make the... Uh, 
Uh, da, da, da. Direct X stretch, is that the one I want? Uh, I want to be able to... There we go. Cool. All right. Um, so let me drop that in kind of round about there. So what we've got here is we have um, booted a virtual Amstrad logo emulator. So first thing that I need to do on this is I need to say, all right, so file, I need to insert some fake floppy drives. Um, now I have a CPM as the Amstrad uh, control program for microcomputers. So this is a virtual disk image for CPM. That's going in my pretend drive A. And for my pretend drive B, I'm going to insert this disk image here, which is the Digital Research logo disk. Now, let's boot CPM. So I need to type, if memory serves, uh, where is that one? Pipe CPM, boom. Oh. There we go. CPM plus. And then I want to open drive B. And I want to submit logo 3. Now the reason why I thought it would be fun to do today's exercise in logo is that having had a very quick look at it, um, we've got to implement uh, seven instructions. North, south, west, east, left, right, and forwards. Um, Logo already has three of those, and this just happens to be the Logo dialect that I know because it's the one that's the first programming language I ever had when I was a kid back in the 80s. Um, so a very quick crash course in Logo for anyone born after 1980 who has probably never seen it in their lives. Uh, Logo was a teaching language that was designed to help kids uh, get to grips with the idea of writing computer programs and stuff. Um, and uh, very basically, if I do CS for clear screen here, that little thing in the middle of the screen there, that is a turtle. And if I type forward 100, the turtle moves forward 100 pixels or 100 places and it draws a line and if I go RT 90 it's going to turn right 90 and I can go forward 100 and I can go right 90 and I can go repeat for uh, forward oh now I need to <laughs> this is where it gets interesting so I'm just going to settings input um, I'm going to grab a screenshot of that uh, and I'm gonna I'm gonna drop that in up where I can see it up here behind the chat window uh, because I need to remember which uh, PC keys map to which logo keys because the keyboard layout is different. Um, so if you see uh, if you look sort of very closely at what we got here, like uh, oh no not that ah no don't do that undo that undo that get rid of that if I zoom in on this thing here um, you'll see we got some hilarious fun and games like the. Uh, the square bracket keys here, they're actually on different keys, one above the other, and, and, and yeah, so I need to keep remembering which keys map onto what, but it's okay, I've got a PDF of the instruction manual for Amstrad Basic here as well. Um, so I need to repeat for, and I need to go, no, it's that one there, come on, come on, come on, come on. This is fun, I don't have, one of these keys is completely missing, that one? That one, that one, it should be that one. Okay, never mind. We'll figure something out. Uh, let me just wrap, map a key to this thing so this is actually going to work. Uh, settings input, let's have a look at what we got here. Uh, actually, I'm going to, let me let me put up a CPC6128 preset there. That should be fine. So that key there is actually going to be... Uh, that's right alt is what I need for that one. Okay, right alt. This is going spectacularly well. <laughs> okay, good news is we probably don't need repeat. Uh, so I can just do like forward 50, and I can do uh, left 90, and I can do forward 10. <coughs> now. Um, so left and right and forward are basically baked in. Those we get for free. If I do a CS, that'll move me back to the middle. I'm pointing north. Now, there's a couple of other primitives in Logo that we're going to need to do to be able to do this. <coughs> if we have a look at our advent of code instructions over here, um, we are looking for the Manhattan distance, which is the sum of the absolute values of its east-west position, its north-south position. So we need to know the exact coordinate offset from its starting position. Now, in Logo... Um, there is a thing called TF, Turtle Facts, tell you where the turtle is, and at the moment, that is telling us 
um, the turtle is at 0, 0, 0. So it's at position x0, y is 0, heading is 0. If I turn right 90, and I say turtle fax, it's now at bearing 90. The heading of the, the, the turtle is now 90. If I turn left 90 again, and I do turtle facts, gives me that thing again. Uh, PD stands for pen down. You have pen down and pen up if you want to move without drawing lines as you go. Um, one there is the color, and uh, I can't remember what true stands for because my Amstrad didn't have that. <laughs> so, what we are going to need to do, we're going to run a series of instructions here. Uh, like, you know, forward 20, right 90, right Ah, right, 90, forward 100, left 90, forward 10, uh, left 180, forward 100. And we want to know the Manhattan distance, but at this point, if I do a TF Turtle Facts, um, I can see there we've got a 100 and we've got a minus 70. And the puzzle is asking for the uh, sum of the absolute values, so that's going to be 100, absolute 70, minus 70 is plus 70, so 170. So getting the Manhattan distance out of this thing is relatively easy once we've got our little turtle into the right place. Now let me just see what we get if we do that, and then we do TF. Um, so although the turtle is way off the screen at this point, the coordinate system still works. So I don't think we're going to overflow. I don't think we're going to run out of, of virtual canvas space. Uh, let me just... Oop. Uh, okay. Um, and nodes, if that number gets small, it means we're running out of logo space and things are going to get bad. Uh, but nodes is alright. It's basically how much free memory have we got left. Right, let's clear the screen on that. Uh, now, let me just show you the documentation that we will be referring to over the course of today's exercise. Uh, my friends, I give you the... Amstrad CPC 6128 user instructions, uh, which we are going to be referring to over the course of the day. And the chapter we are interested in here is chapter 6, which is... Uh, da, 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 da. Somebody has gone through and they've OCR'd all this text that they scanned in from an original 1980s printed manual. Um, and I need to bookmark wherever the hell chapter 6 is. Come on, logo, 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 logo. There we go. Um, and so this is going to give us, uh, if we run out of, of puff on anything, I'm going to go and have a look in here. And this is my Google for the rest of the afternoon, because none of this stuff is on the internet anywhere. So, that is half of the puzzle. Three things are built in. Um, the other two pieces of the puzzle, the north, south, east, and west, those do not exist. Uh, those um, things, there is no logo notion of north, south, east, and west, so we're going to need to build those as functions in our logo program. And then what I'm going to do, let me just show you how we're actually going to get the thing to work. So I'm going to grab my, I'm going to open up a Visual Studio Code window here. Um, now I am going to push some of this to GitHub, but it is not going to be a great deal of use to anybody for anything. Close folder, that's fine. And uh, let me do a new file, that'll do file save as D projects GitHub Advent of Code 2020. Today is day 12. Um, so I'm going to call this input.txt. This is going to be the, the text file that I get from the Advent of Code uh, input merchant. Grab that lot. Right. Um, <coughs> But now what I want to do is I want to take this lot here. What was Logo used for back in the day? It was a so it, it was prim, prim, bleh, predominantly used as a teaching language. Um, but it's actually a Lisp dialect with some graphical I/O and stuff in it. Um, it was very very popular. The BBC Micro, which was huge in computers in the the UK here in the 80s, um, you could get a physical turtle, which was like a little glass or a plastic bubble with wheels in it that would hold a pencil, and would so you'd put a huge piece of paper on the floor and the the, the turtle would literally like draw lines around the classroom and you could control it from the computers which was really cool um, but you know mainly like in the 80s when you say what were computers used for um, most people in the 80s used computers to have fun because they did not solve, you know, other than specialist applications and a little bit of business computation. Um, there's a lovely quote in one of Douglas Adams books where he's talking about a um, 
a, a character who's trying to run word processors on a ZX Spectrum in the 80s and saying, you know, he never got around to writing any essays because it was so much fun teaching the computer how to be a word processor, and he ended up dropping out of college and getting a job as a programmer instead. Um, and computing in the 80s, there was a very definite element of that about it. Um, it was a lot of fun, and actually getting it to do the, the set of useful problems that could be solved with a computer were relatively few and far between, but it was an awful lot of fun solving things in a really, really roundabout way. Um, right, so what I want to do is I'm going to take this thing and I'm going to open up a new file here um, and I'm going to do some uh, very, very rudimentary search and replace. So first I'm just going to do a... Uh, da -da 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 -da. This I could probably do with a regex, but how far down my output am I here? Uh, you can't do block cursors with page down. That's never going to work. Uh, and I can't do it with end, so that's never going to work. That's never going to work. That's never going to work. Halfway there. La da 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 da. I should probably have done this with a regex. Let's do it with a regex. This is going to get very boring very quickly. So what I want to do is I want to find any character, which is going to be our instruction, followed by any sequence of characters, and I want to replace it with slash one space slash two. Replace all that regular expression. No, what? Dollar one, dollar two. What is what is Visual Studio Code think capturing regexes are? Um, there we go. All right. So now, what I want to do is I'm going to do a, a search and replace again. I'm going to find a capital R. I'm going to replace that with RT because those are going directly into Amstrad Logo L uh, write instructions. Find L. Replace that with LT. Place all of those. Find all the Fs. Replace those with FDs. Those are forwards. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to save this file as input.logo. Now there is a feature built into WinApe, which is my Amstrad emulator that I'm using here, which is a thing called auto-type. And what auto-type will allow us to do is to load in a uh, an auto-type. Well, actually, we can let me let me show you what happens if we just paste the input here. Um, so if I copy the first number of lines. If I copy all the lines of that and I go in here and I go file paste Now you see it's it's pasting them through dig, 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 and if I whack shift F4 it's gonna speed the clock speed up by a factor of uh, 10 so it's running at a thousand percent of original speed <laughs> Now you can see the turtle is already obeying those instructions. It's bouncing around all over the grid. The problem is that north, south, east, west, we have not defined any operations for those. Um, now I'm just going to let that thing run itself out. So while that's, that's sitting there and having fun and, and doing all the things it's doing, okay, there we go, there we go. So I'm going to now, I'm going to home that. Okay, so <laughs> check this out. When it's running at a thousand percent, if I tap the H key, um, it registers 10 CPU cycles in the time that I have that key pressed because it's sped up so much. So I'm going to drop that back to uh, this little, you see the, the, the little corner here, uh, which you can't quite see because it's just behind the corner of my head. Uh, there we go. So this little thing here tells you how fast the thing is running. Um, but I'm going to do a home and I'm going to do a CS. So that clears everything, wipes out the buffer. Now we need to define how we are going to do north, south, east, and west. Now if you remember, the problem is we don't know which direction we're pointing in. We know we need to go north, and when we get to north, we want to be in the same direction we were pointing with to start with. So let's say that we are pointing sideways, so we're going to turn uh, right 90, there we go. Now I want to move north by 100 characters. So the first thing I need to know, that is my turtle facts. And <coughs> the third number there, that 90, that is my heading. If I turn left 180, uh, 18 plus what's 180 minus 18 is 162, 162, boom, there we go. Now if I do a turtle facts, um, my bearing there is 270, so it always starts at zero and it goes right round the compass. So if I do TF, it gives me that. Now there's a primitive in logo called item. Um, if I say item 1 of TF, it'll give me the first element in that list. If I do item 2 of TF, it'll give me that one. If I do item 3 of TF, it gives me 270. Now to create variables in logo, uh, you need to use a, a command called make. Um, Logo's variable syntax is uh, 
interesting, because uh, let's say what I want to do, I want to catch the bearing, I want to capture the direction that the mouse, is, that the turtle is currently pointing, and store that in a variable so that I can point it back in that direction again later. So in order to do that, I say I am going to make a variable. Now ordinarily if I say make, it's single quote, indicates a variable that is being assigned. So if I make foo and five, and then to look up the value of that variable, it's colon foo. So I can say make a uh, single quote uh, heading item three, because it uses one based indexing of turtle facts. Okay, now if I print out that heading, 270. I know which direction I'm pointing in. And there is a function in Logo called Ceph, set heading. And Ceph, I give it the absolute bearing that I want to point in. I can now go forward 100. And now I can say Ceph and I can pull that heading back out of the variable. I'm pointing in the direction I was pointing in again. So, what we can do now is we can define a <coughs> <coughs> function to north. So if we want to move, move north by some distance, what we need to do is we need to uh, make heading item three of turtle facts. So capture the direction we are currently pointing in. We need to set heading zero. So we're pointing due north. We need to go forward the number that was passed as an argument to the method, and then we want to set our heading back to the, dis the direction we were pointing in. Hi, Animesh. We're doing Advent of Code Day 12, and we're doing it in Amstrad logo from the 1980s. Um, for fun. And then we want to set the heading. <laughs> hey, it's Arnai. Uh, it's Advent of Code Day 12, and it's in Amstrad logo. Uh, and then we are going to set the heading here back to the heading we first came up with, and then I think end is the, okay, north is defined. So what I should be able to do now, clear screen, go home, yep, that's cool. Um, let's go forward, let's go right 90, and then forward 100, and now if I go north 100, boom, see that? I'm pointing in the direction I was originally pointing in, and north is now defined as a primitive. And if I type add north, here is our little text editor so we can review our function definition. Pretty cool. Um, now the only fun part is that the way to indicate you have finished editing something in Logo is to press the copy key on your Amstrad, which I don't have, but I do have left alt map to it. So in theory, when I press left alt, there, north defined. Um, so let's just go add north again, and... <laughs> Oh, there's a lot more. Logo is actually a Lisp dialect. Um, it, it's got Lisp processing, it's got arguments, it's got Lisp uh, heads and tails and ASCII parsing. You can do some astonishing stuff with Logo. Um, so what I want, just want to look up now in my, my handy into Google here is I want to see if there is a way of assigning a procedure to another procedure, which I think I might be able to do. I'm going to try something a second. Um, I'm going to try making east north, and I'm going to see what happens. North has no value. No, that's not going to work. Um, so, uh, I do not think there is any easy way in Logo of copying a function into another function um, and then uh, verifying it. So we're going to shortcut just a little bit here. Um, I'm going to go into, I'm going to edit that north procedure again. But then I'm going to come over here into Visual Studio Code, and I'm going to uh, new window there, bring that one up. Uh, at what point did they decide that letting you drag the tops of windows was an inefficient use of screen space? <coughs> right, so. What I'm going to do is plug in down here to east distance, uh, make heading item 3 of TF. We want to do that in every case. Uh, we want to set heading so north is there, east is going to be 90, forward distance, set heading back to uh, whatever heading originally was, and that is defined east to west. Distance is going to set heading to 270. And 
and to south. Distance set heading to 180. Okay, bang, bang, bang. So I'm now going to just, uh, I'm going to save that. So, because well, hey, why not push logo code to GitHub? Um, <laughs> uh, so north, south, east, west dot logo. Um, <laughs> Oh yeah, there are there are versions of Logo that run on sensible computers and stuff, but where's the fun in that? Um, so I'm gonna alt copy out of that, and now I can go in here and I can go file paste to east distance, make heading item 3, Seth 90 distance, Seth heading and east is defined, west is defined, south is defined, Boom, CS, clear screen. Um, so let me just check this. I'm going to go right 45, and then I'm going to go north 100, west 100, south 100, east 100. <laughs> We're not optimizing for helpful here, Tsana. We're optimizing for fun, remember? Um, so, right, we've got north, west, south, and east. Those are now defined in our program. So I'm going to jump back over into the VS Code solution, and I am going to open our input logo file, and uh, that's the wrong button there. And I am going to say, anywhere you see W, I want you to replace that with west. All of those. Anywhere you see E, replace that with east. No, not that. Capital E. Match case. Yes, please. Do the whole bigger E, smaller E. E space goes to East space. That's a little bit more sensible. Uh, big S followed by a space. We want to go to South followed by a space. Uh, big N followed by a space. We want to go to North followed by a space. <sighs> there is that lot. Okay, so... Now, the moment of truth, uh, let me just set that back to a slightly more sensible window size. Uh, there we go. Uh, so there, there is all that. Um, yeah, so I, I've got a recording of today, and it's also going up to YouTube. YouTube currently about one day out of five, it seems to lose the recording, which I'm not entirely sure why it does that. Um, but yeah, I've got a recording of this. The question now is, how do you measure the distance home? Uh, da -da -da -da. So, we could just do it calculate it, but it's the Manhattan distance, so uh, we can make a function to do that. So we can, uh, to uh, Manhattan, uh, what we want to do here is, now let me just check, because uh, I need to print something, and I can't actually, hang on, hang on, hang on, and Let me just check the documentation. Um, uh, nope, that's not what we want. Uh, procedures, print out, definition. Uh, no, copy on, copy off. That's actual printing to printer's printing. Uh, PR, PR, that's what we want. Um, so I think if we have PR5, 5, five, okay. So PR1. Not having the left part of the bracket here is going to be fiddly, uh, but I also need a uh, absolute value as well. No, that's basic. That's no good. That's logo. Uh, don't make me write conditionals. Conditionals are hard. Um. <laughs> uh, so let me let me just find the right bookmark in our thing. I, I would have bookmarked the PDF if I'd known I was going to be doing this live. Uh, concept of logo. Logo can help you grow as a programmer. Um, so let's just have a little look through. That's procedures. I want the arithmetic section of this manual. Uh, hence, word and list processing. So that's ASCII values, all but first, all but last. Uh, JavaScript only got those like last year, and Logo could do them in 1985 on an Amstrad with 128 kilobytes of RAM, hey? Um, first, F put, item, last, no. Where's the... 
Uh, arithmetic operations, Arctan, Cos, Int, Quotient, Random, Remainder, Re-Random, Round, Sin. Logical operations, no. Uh, equals, no, that's not what we want. Variables, that's fine thing. Procedures, uh, no, no, no. PO is print add. All I need is the, the way to get the absolute value. Um, of a uh, an integer. So if we've got a flow control setting in here somewhere, no, that's window, that's total graphics, da, 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 that's pen exchange, that's not useful to us. Workspace management, no. Property lists, no. Come on, where's the flow control setting? Uh, keyboards and joysticks, no. Um, is it if? Uh, yeah, that's that's what we need. If a greater than b, all right. So we should be able to. Let's go back over here. So if uh, so, let me set just. To, we're going to play around with this. So set foo to be five. Uh, no, it's make, isn't it? Make foo five. <laughs> if foo greater than zero. PR uh, one if that colon foo greater than zero PR one if once square brackets are out instructions so I'm gonna need to remap my keyboard at this point here uh, so settings input because I need to be able to press that key there and that key there is currently mapped to right alt and is not working so I am gonna map that key there to that key there that's controversial isn't it and then I'm gonna map that one there onto that one there and okay so now I should be able to say uh, if them that one colon foo is greater than zero close bracket square bracket PR one close square bracket that's interesting. Oh no, that worked, that worked, that worked. Whereas if I now make foo to be minus five, and I do if then colon foo is greater than zero, that PR1 should print nothing. Okay, so that gives us the rudiments of being able now to build something which will calculate the Manhattan distance. So what we wanna do is we wanna say uh, to Manhattan, uh, first of all, we want to make um, the x coordinate the item 1 from the turtle facts, which is our left right coordinate. We want to make y the item 2 of our turtle facts. So there is that one. Um, and now I'm just going to do a very, very quick and dirty that says if open brackets there, if x is less than 0. Then we take Berlin, that's right. Uh, if x is less than zero, then I want you to say uh, make... Uh, I wonder if I can do make x minus what x. Um, I've lost my asterisk now. There it is. This might work. This might be complete nonsense. I have no idea. Let's see what we get at the other side. If y is greater than 0, then make y minus 1 multiplied by y. Um, make dist uh, x plus. Where the hell is plus? Settings input. Plus is on. Uh, that key there, which is currently mapped to, yeah, that should be okay. Then it's there, x plus y, okay. PR dist, okay, end, okay. Uh, Manhattan. I don't know how to x. Oh. oh, no, 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 Ed Manhattan, I know what the problem is. Uh, that needs to be 
that, and that needs to be that, and that needs to be that, that needs to be that, and that needs to be that, yep, that's all fine, I think Manhattan defined. Manhattan, I don't know how to dist, ah, oh, yeah, same again, Ed Manhattan. Manhattan currently zero, but let's go forward 10, Manhattan 10, uh, right 90, forward 10, Manhattan should now be 20. And if I go CS, and if I now go, uh, so we're going to go bottom left, so we get negative coordinates in the system, so I'm going to turn right 180, I'm going to go forward. Uh, 14, I'm gonna go right 90, I'm gonna go forward 18, and Manhattan should now give us, what are we looking for here? 22, 32, 14, 18, 32, yeah, that's the correct answer. Okay, so, clear that lot, Manhattan is now defined, so if I go back over here, stick Manhattan in there, grab that whole lot, stick that onto the clipboard, Go File, Paste, that's weird, why is that failing? It's failing because it's going too quickly, I think. Let me crank up this. Ah, okay, so this is where life is going to get interesting. This is where life is going to get very interesting indeed. Um, because if we just paste it in, it goes too fast, it overloads the parser, and by the time it's finished working out what we're talking about, it's missed some keystrokes. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to crank that back up to, to, to that speed, and I'm just going to let this thing run out and completely blow itself off. I could do a hard reset, but then we're going to lose all of the nice little programs that we, we put in there already. Um, so uh, actually, let me let me just... Set that back to normal speed. Uh, now what I can't do, I don't think there is any way in the emulator of copying what we've got off the screen and into the Windows clipboard. Uh, there's definitely a paste, but I don't think there's copy, because I don't think there is any capability to kind of connect the two things together. Um, yeah, the easiest thing to do with emulators if they go completely wrong is to just hard reboot and reset the thing at like a thousand percent normal speed because then it comes back up really, really quickly. Uh, we can't do that. Now, there is a... Uh, there's two ways we could solve this. Um, one of them is I could try and work out how to get this input.logo.txt file onto a virtual three and a half or three inch disk and then load that into the Amstrad using some kind of emulator. Um, <laughs> Let's try this. Let's try this. Uh, so what, I, what I'm going to try, I'm going to try something here. Um, I'm just going to try a, I'm going to try add um, AOC. Uh, so I'm going to say uh, to advent of code, and that's defined. Then I'm going to add AOC. That's going to load that into the editor. And now I want to see, because it's possible that in this mode, pasting is not going to blow up because it's not trying to render any mouse graphics at the same time. Nope, that would be negative. Alright, boom. That's just not picking up. Can't keep up. So, what we're going to need to do is... Wow! So I don't know if you can hear that, but I can hear that. Something has gone horribly, horribly wrong here. I've overflowed the buffer. I've put too much stuff in edit, and it is blowing up. <laughs> uh, all right, so what we're going to do here is I'm going to kill that, because that is now choking horribly on what we've got in there. Uh, what is it, 1640? We'll, we'll get part one done. So debug, boom. Uh, I'm going to reset the emulator. There we go. 
Right, but what I'm going to do now is I'm going to jump in over here. I'm going to go into our north, south, east, west. I'm just going to set up those primitives that we defined. So that's to east. This is to north distance. Set heading zero. That's fine. Now, somewhere here, I have a screenshot of the code for Manhattan. Um, so I am just going to very quickly transcribe that back into here. To Manhattan, make x item 1 of tf, make y item 2 of tf. If x is greater than 0, make... Thank you. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I managed to completely crash the emulator, which is not a good thing to do. But hey, it's all right. It's virtual. We can b bake another one. Uh, make x uh, minus 1 times x. Uh, that needs to be in square brackets, doesn't it? Uh, if y is greater than, less than zero, ding, make y minus one times y, that's all fine. Make dist uh, x plus y, that's fine, pr dist, and okay, so those are all of the procedures that we need to be able to run to make this thing work properly. Now there is a a format in the, the Amstrad emulator that I'm using here, which is called the autotype system. So if we load this thing up, um, and if we get an autotype here, now this thing will let us define a sequence of keystrokes including delays, which will mean we can put a pause after the end of each line to give it time to catch up. Now if any of you have seen um, the, the Art of Code talk that I did, uh, the intro sequence to that is written in Amstrad Basic and it is done using an auto, um, one of these uh, auto auto typing things. And I just need to find the syntax to remind myself. Uh, so this is the intro sequence to the art of code. And if we if we run that, it'll actually do the whole intro. We'll do that at the end if we have a bit of time to it. Um, but I'm going to grab that. I'm going to grab that. I'm going to grab that. And then these pauses are what we want in here. So I'm going to jump back over to our input logo. I'm going to create a new file. And I'm going to call this file art of code.atp uh, and I'm going to drop that into advent of code day 12 and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bake in everything that is necessary here to get from a cold boot to the answer to our advent of code problem so uh, art of code no why, why did I call that art of code this is advent of code my brain is is, is wonk uh, advent of code.atp and I do not want to put a plain text I just want that to be called that advent of code.atp so pipe CPM boots the CPM operating system pause for 320 milliseconds B colon is uh, B sw sw uh, switch to drive B pause 200 submit logo 3 then we probably want at this point to pause for about a second while the logo program wakes itself up uh, that will boot that in, and then what we want to do is grab our logo procedures here. I'm going to bring this lot across, and uh, I am going to just put at the start of every single one of those lines, so any new line that is not followed by one of those, uh, I want to put a pause, uh, we'll give it about probably 200 is good enough. Uh, bung that lot in. Ah, no, and I did not want to clobber all the inputs when I did that. What's the problem we got there? It's confused, it's, it's consuming that piece of input. All right. Um, yeah, that should be all right. So let me just remove manually chop out these duplicates here. That pause 1000 needs to stay. That needs to stay. That needs to stay. So that should give us all of our procedures. So save that. That's advent of code.atp. Jump in over here. File auto type load uh, D projects GitHub advent of code 2020 day 12. Advent of code.atp, okay, boom, now when I run that, CPM, now if I crank this up to 1000% normal speed, there we go.
So what this gives us is the, the uh, incredibly useful ability to use a real code editor and revision control system to write programs and then kind of fast forward load them into uh, Amstrad Logo emulator here. Um, <coughs> so what we want to do now is to grab our advent of code, the input logo thing that we wrote here. I'm going to grab that entire file there. I'm going to come over to advent of code. I'm going to drop that whole lot in. And I am going to stick a pause at the start of each of those lines. Uh, pause 200. I'm going to try it with uh, 100, because actually, no, I'm going to... The, the logo drawing instructions take a certain amount of time depending how far they have to move. Um, so, all right, that's... Uh, I'll go with 200. We'll see how we get on with that. If it starts choking, we're going to need to go with a longer delay. Uh, okay, so there's... What happened? What did I do? Ah, uh, no, come on. Redo that. Edit. Redo that. Edit. That's fine. Uh, home to that, and oh, it's doing that Visual Studio thing, isn't it? That's really useful. Um, where, so I want to search within the selection only, please. What the? No, no, no. Preserve case. Yes. Where on earth is the thing in Visual Studio that lets you say I only want to search within the text that I currently have selected? That's a feature, right? Like I didn't, I didn't. It's that one there. Of course it is. Because why would you not possibly want that to be the default when you do a search and replace? <sighs> Amstrad logo, easy. Computer technology has moved backwards in the intervening period of history. Yes, we want a regular expression. Yes, we want all of those. That's fine. We want to search within the selection. I cannot believe that we are being stymied at this point here by the inability to do a, a search and replace. What on earth is going on? It's finding, for some reason, the first line in the file, not the first line of each line. Oh, man. Fascinating. Right. Fine. The beginning of a line. Yeah, regular expression is on. The search inside selection. Replace everything. Does nothing. What am I missing here? Like, why is that just, just hammering new pauses onto the beginning of the file? Am I in single line mode? What is single line mode? Like, is that a thing? Why would that be a thing? Why would anyone need a, a text editor that only works in one line at a time? In multi-line mode, blah, 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 blah. Writing the code simple, copying and pasting. Regex is a single line mode, yeah, but but you know I'm like I've got a block of text selected here. Why would Visual Studio be uh, opting to run that in multiple line mode instead of single line mode? Um, I just I, I I'm 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 curious as to there. Okay, look at that. That did that did kind of what we want for certain values of what do we want? Inside selection, yes, please replace all those. Boom, there we go. Look at that. I had to switch it off and on again. Right, let's see what we get. So, uh, I am going to, uh, just to, to reboot the whole thing from scratch again, we're gonna go settings, cold reset, boom, there we go. We are gonna go file, uh, auto type, we are gonna grab our advent of code ATP. Let's check we have all of our souths and things and end with a Manhattan, there we do, boom that. Now this is the point where, you know, 
perhaps uh, we, we would optimize it, perhaps we tweak some of these delays, perhaps we could uh, crank up the clock speed even higher. If it looks like it's taken a long time to run, we can potentially go in and do that. Uh, let me crank the speed up here, so I can go into the emulator, and I'm going to say settings, uh, general, uh, okay, thousand percent is as fast as it's going to go. Uh, okay, what is turbo mode? Boom. So the question is, will it be quicker to go back, take out a little bit of each of those delays, and then run the thing again from scratch from the beginning, or is it going to be quicker just to sit and let this thing work its way through and see how far through it we're going to get? I'm going to let this thing run through. 1651, if we get to the... Um, no, it's still, so the cursor you can see in the middle there, Chris, that's a ghost cursor. The real one is somewhere off the bottom of the screen at the moment. I don't know quite where it's gone. Um, it's off having a little adventure outside the viewport somewhere that we're not supposed to see. It'll be back. <laughs> Which is a shame, because this would have been quite an interesting little exercise if we'd... Uh, being able to see it doing its thing and running all over the screen. As it is, it's 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 off somewhere, and we don't know where it went. And of course, uh, Amstrad Basic, Amstrad Logo, has no concept of a virtual coordinate system. Um, can you zoom in Logo? No, 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 no. I'm zooming just no, this not not a thing. There's probably direct memory access. Like the original implementation here almost certainly is writing ones and zeros into a block of memory that is fed directly into the pixel map or the, the bit mapper for the display adapter. And so, you know, the notion of zooming is like it doesn't even know that there's an abstraction between what's on screen and what's on the on the cathode ray tube display. Now what, what could actually make this go faster is we could do a pen up at the beginning, because if the if the turtle doesn't actually have to draw anything, it will go quicker. But I'm just curious to let this run through and see where it gets to, and see what the, the end of it is. Progress indicator would have been interesting, right? <laughs> now normally on Adventa code, by the time we get to the point where you punch the coordinates into the, the web page, um. <laughs> hey Marty, hey Saram, welcome. Um. Yeah, normally uh, by the time we get to the, the, the bit where you put the number in, I'm relatively confident that it's going to be the right thing. Uh, today I have absolutely no idea. By the time this finishes running and it does its Manhattan thing, it's going to give me a number, I'm going to punch it in, and if it's not the right number, i got literally no idea what we're going to do with it. As you can tell, this this uh, particular mode of execution does not massively lend itself. Hey, Lars, welcome. Does not massively lend itself to a huge amount of in-depth debugging. I should plug in instruments. That's what I should do. I should play guitar while it's it's grinding through and doing its thing. Uh, and yeah, it's a shame we can't watch it. If we could see where it was and see what it's doing here. Ah, uh, APIs. <laughs> so we got a, for those folks who just joined the stream, we got a YouTube stream and we got a Twitch stream, and YouTube has more latency than Twitch. So uh, the folks who are watching it on Twitch can see things before the YouTubers can see them. Um, but what's interesting now is that Chris who's watching it on YouTube, he's seeing me reply to comments that he can't see yet, even though they're YouTube comments. How close do you think we are? Do you think this thing is almost finished? We had a couple of hundred of these inputs, didn't we? <laughs> Watch it on Twitch, chatting on YouTube. Live in the dream. Are there comments in Logo? Yes. Um, 
So while that's going on, here is the programmer's manual. Uh, I'm trying to remember what the comment syntax in Logo is. Uh, Logo is chapter 6 of this document, and it's there, that's fine, that's fine. That's there, that's... And in Logo is... no, Operation 6.13. So yeah, the logo language definition. Could have built in line indicators using comments as a progress indicator. Actually, that's that's not a bad idea. Um, if there was a way of doing it. How might one implement this in a similar fashion in any modern programming language? We have a result! We have a Manhattan! We have 1625! Advent of code, day 12, 1625! Boom. Is not the right answer. Your answer is too high. Well, crap. <laughs> that did not work. Now, I'm curious as to why that didn't work. What was our last line there? Let's just check the input was correct. It was indeed a forward 97. Forward 7, that's, 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 that, yeah, 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 yeah. Right, I'm just going to try one thing. I'm going to just see if we can get a... So I'm going to find pause 200 and I'm going to replace it with pause 100. Uh, replace everything for that. That should do nicely. Um, may have to slow the pauses. No, I don't think the pauses were too slow. Um, I think we picked up everything that it, that it needed to. Uh, let me just try... So see us on that. Uh, I'm going to uh, just reboot the whole thing. Um, Actually, let me just ch test the procedure we've got with the the, d the dummy input we had. Um, so they had an N10, N3, F7, R90, F11, right. We'll do the pen up as well. That'll make things go quicker. Um, but there's that distance east, west, south. And then so forward 10, north 3, forward 7, Right 90, forward 11, uh, stick a pause at the beginning of each of those, Manhattan, so let me just uh, grab, I'm going to chop at the rest of that file and I'm going to save this as AOC example .atp. There's that one. That's cool. All right, so now in the emulator we are going to go settings cold reset. Uh, do that again. Uh, what is it? Control F9. There we go. File, auto type. Let's load advent of code example. Um, okay, run that. Crank up the clock speed. 1000%. Logo 3. Manhattan. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, 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 yes. That says 31. That says 25. Interesting. Very interesting. All right, let's 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 break this down. We're going to run this through step by step. Uh, so we've got our little set of instructions over there. Let me see why this isn't working, because if we can solve this one, um, let's have a look. What are our turtle facts here? Uh, let me shift that back to real-time speed. Uh, turtle facts. Um, 11 and 20. All right, CS, set back to the beginning of the thing. So we've got forward 10. Okay, that moves us forward 10. North 3. Total facts now is Norton 13. Forward 7. Yep. Right 90. Yep. And forward 11. Total facts. 11 and 20. Ah! <laughs> Always.
always read the documentation. The ship starts by facing east. <laughs> right, let's check that again. So the ship starts by facing east. Now, let's just run that little set of instructions again. So that's all there, that's all there, that's all there. So pause 100, that's fine. And we want to go right 90, and then we want to run our auto hotkey sequence. So, boom, control F9, file auto type, boom, load. Advent a code example, okay, and run it. Crank it. Twenty-five. Right. Right. Uh, so I'm just going to use my example here. I'm going to see if I can get these pause 100s just running a tiny, tiny bit faster. Um, so the, the chunk I'm interested in is this one here. And we are going to do a pen up as well, won't we? Actually... I'm not going to do a pen up because I think maybe we can get this thing to be so if I take pause 100 and replace it with let's let's replace it with a pause 60 that will maybe be workable for what we're looking at here so let's do a another boom hard reboot knock it over bring it back up again file auto type load advent code example boom run the thing yeah there we go that appears to be keeping up with what we're doing there. Manhattan at 25. Um, okay. So, let's go back to our uh, Advent Code ATP example. I want to grab all my input here. So that there, that's my puzzle input, isn't it? That's the, the stuff that I actually need. Uh, so the pieces that we're missing here is one, we were going to replace all the hundreds with 60s, make the thing run a little quicker, and we need to start with the uh, ship facing east. Okay. Ship it. See? Ship it. Ship. East. Ship. Sorry. Um... <laughs> And also, now it's facing the right direction. Maybe, 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 we'll actually get to watch it doing what it's doing. So let's do a, a hard reset here. Uh, come on, shift control f 9 Thank you very much. File auto type. We are going to load advent of code, and we are going to say OK, and it is going to run. <coughs> If this doesn't work, we'll do it in Excel. Ah, uh, hang on, did you see that? That's too fast. There was an I don't know how to popped up. So those those delays are too aggressive. We're missing things. Uh, so I'm going to need to change the pause 60s to something a little bit less aggressive. Uh, let's go with, go with 100. I think at 100 it was working pretty well. Uh, so we'll save that lot again. Reboot the thing again. And... Uh, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna do a Camtasia screen recording so I can stick this up on Twitter because you know how, how Twitter likes watching cartoons made on vintage retro computers. Uh, let me just resize that to a nice sensible. Tw oh my God, that's hideous. Uh, let's go with a nice sensible 640 by. No, even that's nasty. Uh, let's go with a uh, 800 by 600. That'll do. Yeah, that'll do nicely. All right, new recording. Thank you very much, uh, Camtasia. This is me being really optimistic, by the way, because I'm working on the assumption that whatever I do next is going to... Um, uh, so I want to lock that to that application. Yep, that's fine. And I want to start recording that one. And 
now file auto type load from advent of code dot ATP boom run it what do you think is it gonna work we did we get to see a little bit more of the ship's travels although I have a feeling that the ship is gonna vanish off the left hand side of the viewport and never be seen again with the way that this is going uh, but it's still out there somewhere so we're watching very very closely for a I don't know how to alf because if we get a I don't know how to do anything it means that it's it's uh, failed <laughs> or rather the experiment has succeeded and we have proved that trying to do advent of code I don't know how to F you see that you see that uh, I need to slow it down even further uh, let me pause that boom is that West 4, F36. Find 36s. Hmm. Because <laughs> it's picking up the F, but it's not picking up the D. And that makes me wonder if we need a slightly less aggressive. Um, Need to run the, th the whole thing at a slightly b better speed. Let me just—I'm uh, gonna—I'm gonna crank up some of these pauses a little bit. I'm gonna change the pause 100 to a pause 120 and run that through. I'm gonna save that back over to my emulator. Uh, okay, this, by the way, is cool. This is the debugger that shows you the states of all the registers in the machine and what's in all the different. Uh, you know, CPU registers and ROM and all that kind of stuff. Uh, so if you want to do anything really, really hardcore with it. Uh, but, right, so we want to come over here and I'm going to do a shift control f 9 Boom! Hard reboot the whole thing. I'm going to do an auto type. I'm going to load that from uh, AOC example. No, adventacode.atp. Okay. And we're going to try and, and spot that sweet balance between taking too long and going too fast. Right, south, west, forward, west, left, forward, lift, east, left, south, left, forward, west. This is all a little bit intense, but... Um, Ah, that doesn't matter. It's exciting, this, isn't it? Everyone sitting watching a computer that's pretending to be a computer from... Uh, was 1985? 35 years ago. Oh my god, I'm old. What I'm seriously wondering now is whether we could start from a different position. And, and get more of the animation actually appearing on the screen as we do this. Uh, or we could run the logo program on something that actually has a proper display, of course. Uh, what's the unit on the pause instruction? Um, milliseconds. Uh, so the, that, that's part of the, as it plays back the macro, the emulator, if it sees a pause 120, it'll wait 120 milliseconds before it presses the next key. It was back briefly. It didn't stay back, but it was back ever so briefly there. So this is a shame, because if we could see it, this might actually be quite interesting. I saw something there that looked weird. I saw something there that looked like it might not work. 
but I'm hoping it was just a display glitch on the emulator and not a problem with the actual program. Yeah, I saw the same thing. Uh, if this doesn't work, we'll do it in Excel. <laughs> Given that the, the, the average number of people on these streams this week has been a number that would comfortably fit into a Zoom call, I'm almost wondering whether I should just fire up Zoom as well and you can all join that and we'll have a, um, you know, kind of uh, like an OBS virtual cam thing running so you can see what I'm doing, but then we can talk to each other about it in real time. Um, <laughs> so it's back oh and it's gone again Oh, you see that? Just for a second there? Ship, and there it is, the ship's back again, and the ship's back again, and where's it gonna end up? Oh, this is exciting. It's gone again, and maybe it's coming back again, and uh, this is, this is, oh. The fact I can see it kind of suggests something vaguely positive is happening here. Now, I'm sure that the personalized inputs are randomly generated. That's given me a Manhattan of 351, and we have recorded the whole thing. So now, uh, let's just do a quick check. What am I... Oh, no, no, turn off the, the super speedy Gonzales. Uh, our turtle facts here. No, that one. Thank you very much. Turtle facts. 351. 351. We're going to try 351 here. We're going to see what we get out of, out of that one there. So, uh, God, I hope this works. <laughs> uh, I'm just going to... I'm going to put that in there. 351 is not the right answer. Your number is too low. So I am now at a point where I do not know whether the problem is that the program is running too uh, quickly or that it's missing input steps or that something just is not adding up entirely right. Because uh, there was a little bit of display glitching there. There was a tiny bit of weirdness happened. Um, what do you think, gang? Shall I try putting in, in, just slowing the whole thing down a little and letting it run? Uh, actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to slow that thing down. Um, yeah, yeah, that one little weird glitch. Uh, that 150. Yeah, let's let let's try it. Um, but then while this thing is running in the emulator, um, I'm going to try and solve it a different way while that's running, so that we do actually get an answer, and then I can I can go and have a look at, at part two. Yeah, we'll do it with Excel. That'd be fun. Uh, so, let it run slow while you implement it in parallel elsewhere. Sounds like a very, very pragmatic solution here. Um, so, I'm going to come over here and I'm going to replace all of the... Uh, actually, first I'm going to stop the screen recording because we don't need that anymore. Um, I just want to have a look at the... Uh, Auto-type settings in here because there isn't really anything much you can configure <coughs> beyond just, just putting pauses in for things. Um, and if I put a pause at the end of every line, uh, so I'm going to say pause 120, uh, let's, let's mix that up for a pause 200, there we go, that should give us a pretty good amount of stuff. And I'm just going to check there's nothing here in this input that looks erroneous. Everything in there I think is is forward, southwest, forward, left, yeah, that's all fine. Um, the other possibility, of course, is that the integer arithmetic on the Amstrad 128 emulator is not 100% up to snuff, uh, which is a distinct possibility. But let's try running through that whole lot there. Uh, the Manhattan's fine, our north functions are fine. So north is 0, east is 90, west is 270. South is 180. Yeah, that's all correct. We've verified it. It worked on the test input. We're doing a right 90, so we're pointing in the right direction to start with. 
So let's try running this again. So I'm going to just, uh, let me stick Camtasia out of the way. There is WinApe, that's fine. Shift Control F9, reboot all the things, and file auto type, load advent of code, boom, and we are going to, okay, we are going to run that. And uh, I'm going to go in here and crank it to high speed again. And that's just going to quietly sit over there. Sold it in Excel. So, what do we got? There's our input.txt. That's absolutely fine. So there is that. So, uh, what do we need to do? I don't think, uh, so Shivam, it's not actually buffering um, when it's running like this because each instruction is just being typed in in turn into the interpreter. Nothing actually uh, nothing is actually getting stored, so the program is never getting loaded into the Amstrad. It's simulating somebody typing it in line by line by line um, on the program as we're, as we're going along. So I'm going to stick that on that half of the screen and keep that up in the other half so we can see what's going on with it. Um, right, so what we want in here is uh, we're going to have a column here for bearing and we are going to have a column here for uh, our x distance and we're going to have a column in here for our y distance and we can do the whole thing so we are starting off at the beginning of the thing using the same coordinate system so our bearing is 90 that's 0 that's 0 now um, this is where it gets a little bit exciting so we are gonna say uh, what is the result of this one here so we've got uh, our so delta bearing so db is here delta x and delta y so db is gonna be uh, now this is where it gets a little bit interesting um, so we want a function that says uh, if r180 so if a3 uh, starts with I'm gonna need to do some googling here to check the Excel syntax that is necessary for what we are looking for. Uh, so, uh, Excel split string. Uh, split string a specific character. Yeah, that's fine. Equals uh, left text and. Uh, yeah, okay. Uh, left text one. So, mid. Mid is the one we want, isn't it? So, we want. Uh, well, actually, what I want to say here is equals. Um, if left uh, a3 uh, 1 equals r, then our delta bearing is going to be so. If we are turning right, then we are adding to the uh, thing. If it is that, then it is going to be mid of A3, and it is going to be the start number is 2. Does Excel use 1 based indexing? Um, and uh, what do I get if I just put 5 in there? Is that going to give us anything? Um, otherwise, if left A3, 1 uh, equals L, then it is going to be minus mid a3 to 5 otherwise 0 180 so let's just check that one that's 0 that's minus 90 that's okay so that's cool so yep um, so then at any given point here the uh, that thing we can copy so that is uh, what what's the delta on our bearing for, for each one of these things um, and that probably just needs a plus to the how do you how do you say for something to be a number is it like num uh, number value converts text to a number in a ah oh, what the hell just happened there uh, number value mid a3 of that otherwise that lot so there's that now that one we can go all the way down to the end of our input All right, so that's minus 90s, minus 90s, minus 90s. That's all pretty good. So then the bearing that we are currently pointing at in every case is going to be the bearing we were pointing at previously. 
modified by whatever the result of modifying the bearing in this scenario is going to be. Uh, is that going to take me down to there? That should be fine. Yep, that seems to have done the trick. Uh, now, actually, the interesting question, bearing is always that, plus 90, that's plus 90. So our x distance is going to be... <laughs> How's our little, little, little chap getting on over here? Still quietly ticking away. Let's see what we get coming out of that. Um, so our x distance is going to be, at this point, if... Ah, uh, no, Excel is a horrible language to try and do this in. Um, okay, so our dx is going to be if the that is a east or west. So uh, that equals... We can break this down even further. We can do something a little bit more interesting. Uh, so we're going to build basically a kind of parsing state machine as a bunch of Excel functions. So this is going to be the code and this is going to be the number. And the code here in every case is going to be left A3 of 1. That gives us our code. And this is going to be the number value of uh, mid A3 and whatever we got out of it. That doesn't really matter too much. So that's going to do that. I've entered too few arguments. Uh, one, one, th it's two, one thousand, isn't it? Okay. So for every one now, we're going to get the code and we're going to get the number. It's going to break those out separately. Okay, that's a little bit more useful. Yeah, parse the string into letter plus number, and we've got one five eight nine says our Manhattan function over here. Uh, now I hope this works because if it works, I can stop trying to do it in Excel. Boom! Look at that! We are one gold star closer! <laughs> Holy crap! I can't believe that actually worked! <laughs> oh, that's beautiful! Oh, that's, that's, that's super nice, that is!